respected seniors and dear friends this presentation is about uh, chest wall blocks if you look back at the 20th century epidural was the only modality for pain relief either in abdominal surgery or chest wall surgery for chest wall surgery there was another mod modality that is uh, thoracic paravertebral block but in 21st se century it came with tab block for abdominal surgery and various blocks like pax1 pax2 and serratus plane block for chest wall surgeries so first question comes to our mind is why we need chest wall blocks when thoracic epidural and thoracic paravertebral block is called a gold standard technique to provide analgesia for surgeries of chest wall but it is uh, either thoracic epidural or thoracic paravertebral block is technically little difficult it is called advanced block even with ultrasound guided techniques uh, in compared to that uh, chest wall blocks like pax1 pax2 uh, and the serratus plane blocks are very superficial block and very easy blocks they are safe because they are away from uh, neurexis while thoracic paravertebral block you are very close to neurexis and there are chances of uh, epidural injection or subarachnoid injection or pneumothorax and many other complication in compared to that pax blocks are very safe chest wall also get innervation from branches of brachial plexus which is not covered by thoracic paravertebral blocks uh, which is easy which can be easily covered with by giving pax one block so that's why uh, in the recent year recent few years in uh, there are many studies coming with use of pax1 pax2 and uh, serratus plane block pax1 block was uh, first described by rafael blanco in 2011 and uh, in subsequent years he described pax2 and serratus anterior plane block if you look at the anatomy chest wall is supplied by three set of nerve uh, uh, it is supplied by pectoral nerve that is lateral pectoral nerve and medial pectoral nerve which are branches of brachial plexus it is supplied by intercostal nerve that is t2 to t6 uh, it go uh, serratus anterior muscle get innervated from long thoracic nerve while latissimus dorsi muscle is getting innervation from thoracodoxal nerve which is again branch of brachial plexus if you look at the anatomy here this is pec major muscle if you remove that muscle you will find that uh, there is uh, pec minor muscle is lying below it and uh, it uh, uh, lateral pectoral nerve uh, passes in between pec major and pec minor while medial pectoral nerve also pierces pec minor and passes it through this is serratus anterior muscle over that lies uh, long thoracic nerve if if we remove it you can see branches of intercostal nerve there is lateral branch of intercostal nerves and they supply uh, uh, thor uh, anterior thoracic wall if we go posteriorly th this is the uh, thoracodorsal nerve and uh, below that lies the latissimus dorsi muscle so if you uh, uh, remove the let uh, that latissimus dorsi muscle you will find serratus anterior muscle so if we replay this video from beginning again here you can see pec major below that lies pec minor and in between that two nerves that is lateral pectoral and medial pectoral nerve that is accompanied by uh, artery that is uh, branch of thoracodorsal artery so if you inject la between these two muscle you will block this two nerve and that is pex one block if you go laterally and inject drug between pec minor and serratus anterior it will block t2 to t6 uh, that is lateral branches of uh, intercostal nerves and uh, it will it is called pax2 block if you go more posterior in the mid axillary line and inject drug between latissimus dorsi and the serratus anteriorly this will again block uh, 
uh, intercostal now up to T2 to T9 it, it has got ex, uh, extended effect and there are two approach you can inject between latissimus dorsi and uh, serratus anterior or you can inject below serratus anterior uh, with uh, injection between uh, serratus anterior and latissimus dorsi effect is prolonged as compared to injection below serratus anterior these are the dermatomes of chest wall so here you can see uh, c5 also supplies the uh, uppermost part of ch chest wall so you require to block uh, suprascapular now uh, supraclavicular now to cover this ply uh, th this area and for that you require just local infiltration over clavicle if you look at the indications of pex1 block uh, it is used for insertion of breast implant for pacemaker insertion or portacath insertion so this block is used when you require manipulation of uh, or dissection of uh, pectoralis major muscle uh, pex2 block is used for mrm with axillary dissection it is to provide analgesia Serratus anterior plank block uh, is required when you are going more lateral or you, you are doing the LD flap reconstruction. It is uh, SAP ca uh, catheters are used for multiple rib fractures and it gives uh, good analgesia for uh, rib fractures uh, if it is lying in the uh, lying anteriorly. Nose blocks with PEX1 you block uh, lateral pectoral nerve and medial pectoral nerve. With PEX2 you block T2 to T4 and sometimes T5 and long thoracic now with uh, serratus anterior plane block you block thoracodorsal now and sometimes and uh, well, many a times it blocks intercostal now up to T2 to T9 technique it is very easy block you have to inject 10 ml of LA between peak torus major and peak minor for PEX1 you have to inject 20 ml of LA between peak minor and serratus anterior for PEX2 and for serratus anterior plane block you have to inject LA between latissimus dorsi and serratus anterior for uh, that is 20 to 25 ml of LA. So if we start scanning, we have to start scanning in the infraclavicular area. We have to look for the uh, uh, subclavian artery and vein. Then we have to make the probe oblique and go below to see the pec major and pec minor muscle you will find the bran pectoral branch of thoracodorsal artery uh, in this plane so that is a landmark so uh, here you can see i am moving prop uh, distally to look at the third or fourth rib uh, when i move prop medially you can very easily see it so if we look at the ultrasound picture here you can see this is the artery uh, this is the pec major muscle this is pec minor muscle here you can see this is the thoracodorsal artery so this is the plane where we have to inject drug to, for pex1 this is third rib so here uh, you can find serratus anterior muscle and pec minor so if i inject 20 ml of la here it will become pex2 block for serratus uh, anterior plane block i have to go in the up to fifth rib in the mid axillary line here you can see this is the beginning of latissimus muscle, dorsi muscle and this is serratus anterior muscle so if i inject drug uh, between this plane it will block the uh, uh, serratus plane block uh, so i have to go uh, come from cranial to caudal uh, it will be in plane technique i will inject 0.2 percent uh, 25 ml of la in this plane and uh, it will provide excellent analgesia. If you look at the block technique, PEX1, PEX2 and uh, PEX3 here you can see PEX, this is PEX major muscle, this is PEX minor muscle. If you look at the block technique, this is the again thoracodorsal artery, I am coming in plane from uh, uh, cranial to caudal, my needle is in, in plane, I am targeting the plane between PEX major and PEX minor. I will use 0.2% of ropivacin, uh, 10 ml, and that is enough for PEC, PEC 1 block, and it will block lateral pectoral nerve and medial pectoral nerve. This is uh, used for uh, um, surgeries like breast implant or pacemaker insertion, uh, like that. So, here you can see nice spread of the drug between in the plane between PEC major and PEC minor. So I will inject 10 ml of LA and it will spread nicely in the plane. After injecting this, I will redirect the needle between the pec minor and serratus anterior 
I will direct the needles towards Z. Here you can see this is pec major, pec minor and select ascent here. This is the third rib. So I will target the ribs. So that's why uh, because I don't want to puncture the pleura. If I target the needle towards pleura then there are chances of uh, puncture if I uh, can't visualize the needle tip. But here I am towards the rib and there are less chances of pneumothorax. So I have started injecting the drug between two muscles and uh, drug will spread nicely in the civet, um, PEX2 plane and it will block T224 invariably in all patient and sometimes up to T5 so it provides very good analysis here for breast surgery in the post-operative period as well as in the intraoperative period so this is PEX1 and PEX2 again PEX1 require 10 ml of LA PEX2 require 20 ml of LA so these are high volume blocks so we uh, we need to dilute the drugs uh, so that's why I use 0.2% of rope vacancy uh, so that I can give larger volume because these blocks are facial plane block and they require larger volume of drug to provide complete block so this is uh, about uh, PEX2 block and uh, now we will see uh, serratus plane block. This is latissimus dorsi muscle. This is serratus anterior muscle. Again, my needle is coming from carinate to caudal. I am targeting the plane between uh, latissimus dorsi and uh, serratus anterior. You can even go below serratus anterior, but duration of analysis is shorter. Uh, that is shown in first study by Rafael Blanco. So here I am injecting 25 ml of L between L dorsi and serratus anterior so for breast surgery if you are doing MRM you can either give PEX2 block or serratus plane block and it provides very good analysis here uh, PEX1 block is required for uh, surgeries where you require uh, pectoral muscle dissection otherwise you can uh, uh, avoid it but after giving this block, uh, anterior cutaneous branches are spared. So for that, you required uh, just local infiltration in the uh, uh, just lateral to the uh, sternum. So if you inject 5 to 6 ml uh, local infiltration in the parasternal area, it will block this anterior cutaneous branches of the intercostal is now, and that will complete your block. Can we do it without ultrasound? Um, everybody doesn't have access to ultrasound machine. So you can give it with LOR technique. Uh, this is the LOR PEX2 block. Here you can see uh, you have to palpate third rib, blunt, use blunt tip needle, hit the rib, withdraw the needle till skin, fill the LOR of a prepectoral fascia, and then at second resistance, uh, uh, you have to inject the drug. Here I am uh, searching for the rib. Uh, you have to be careful. Uh, you have to in uh, attend the syringe with the needle so that uh, there are reduced chances of pneumothorax. I will hit the rib. I will withdraw the needle up to skin. Now again I will feel the uh, pop of prepectoral fascia. At second resistance I will inject the uh, drug that will become my PEX1 block and uh, after injecting uh, 5 to 10 ml there I will again inject another 20 ml of alloy just after hitting the third or fourth rib that will become my PEX2 block so uh, with a blind technique you can uh, do this with for serratus spine block you have to go in the mid axillary line pulpit third rib hit the rib withdraw a bit and again inject 25 ml of LA that will spread below the serratus anterior so duration might be shorter here you can see uh, with, uh, there is a drug between pec major and minor and uh, the, there is there was drug between pec minor and serratus anterior also here you can see the drug spread with LOR technique so this is also very effective you can do it without ultrasound but question is is there enough evidence to use this block for uh, breast surgery there are very small study they are pilot studies they, they are studies of 10 15 20 cases so there is not enough evidence but in my experience it provides good, good analgesia post-operatively if you use uh, a, a, a analgesic requirement definitely comes down with uh, by using these blocks 
uh, if it is uh, MRM you can use either PEX2 or uh, serratus plane block if it is uh, uh, a surgery like putting breast implant you can use PEX1 block so you have to select the block wisely according to surgery in surgeons perspective they are worried about recurrence and they feel that if I insert the needle through the carcinogenic tissue there are chances of implant of cancer cell in the normal area so that's why they are a bit reluctant uh, of using these blocks in during breast surgery especially when it is a cancer surgery and uh, when you inject the drug between PEC, uh, PEC major and PEC minor or PEC minor and serratus anterior when they open that plane there will be drug spillage and it comes in your usage of cautery it uh, especially unipolar cautery it is difficult to use when there is a fluid in this plane so that's why sometimes surgeons are reluctant to allow us using these blocks some very basic tip don't advance needle tip if you don't if you cannot visualize the uh, needle tip always aspirate before you inject and look for the drug spread in the facial plane because there are vessels in this facial plane and if you inject uh, the drug in vessels there are chances of last always prefer in plane technique so that you can visualize the needle tip so you can reduce the chances of pneumothorax don't forget these blocks are part of multimodal analgesia so use it along with other analgesic like NSAID and paracetamol and opioids whenever required these are high volume blocks so calculate toxic dose of LA and dilute it accordingly uh, so that uh, you don't inject a larger volume of drug and uh, that there are chances of local anesthetic toxicity this is all about PEX block